The U.S. March for Life is a bucket list item for many pro-lifers. And today we are joined by Jeannie Mancini, the president of the March for Life, to talk about what we can expect in this year's March. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Pro-Life Guys podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Peter. I'm the host of the show. And with me again is Cameron Cote, my wonderful co-host. Hello, sir. Hey, hey. Good to be back. And right off top of this show, I want to give a huge shout out to Anne Claire, who we hear is a big fan of the show. She is the um, involved with the March for Life in DC. She was the one who helped set up this interview with Jeannie Mancini, who must be one of the busiest people in the world right now. A week before the March for Life at time of recording, um, huge shout out to Anne Claire. Really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, let's talk about this this episode, Peter. Yeah, for sure, Cam. The March for Life for many pro-lifers is a major calendar event, um, certainly for pro-lifers where we live in Canada and in the United States. And so whether people live in Washington, D.C., people are traveling from around the country. People are traveling internationally to go to the March for Life. And Jeannie's going to talk in just a moment about the absolute amazing aspect of being at the March for Life, being there with the thousands upon thousands of people, uh, an experience that certainly cannot be replicated from watching the events on YouTube from your own home. But yeah, this is an event where thousands, hundreds of thousands of pro-lifers gather, like-minded people gather to be inspired, to be motivated, to be educated, and to get ready to go back to their hometowns to continue the pro-life outreach that is happening there. And so to talk about the March for Life that is taking place tomorrow, um, from, from when this is going to be published tomorrow this year. Uh, and today we're honored to have on Jeannie Mancini. She is the president of the March for life, the group responsible for the March for life in the United States every year. And, uh, it, I think it's on the anniversary of Roe versus Wade. Am I correct? It can. Yeah. On the anniversary of Roe versus Wade, Jeannie previously worked with the family research council council and the United States Department of Health and Human Services. She holds an undergraduate degree in psychology from James Madison University and a master's degree in the theology of marriage and family from the Pope John Paul II Institute for Studies on Marriage and the Family. This is our conversation with Jeannie Mancini. Jeannie, thank you so much for taking the time and joining us on the podcast. Well, thanks so much for having me, Peter. Yeah, so let's talk about the theme this year, which is Equality Begins in the Womb, uh, the theme of the March for Life that we are uh, yeah, excited for coming up very shortly. Why is this such an important theme to discuss considering the current narrative surrounding abortion? Well, especially these past couple of years, but but almost always, we are hearing a lot of talk about equity and equality. And, you know, these are very important conversations to have, you know, whether it's racial injustices or um, issues surrounding the COVID pandemic, etc. But we wanted to insert into that conversation, the inherent dignity of the unborn child, as well, who also has equal dignity. And so we thought it was a great cultural juncture, I guess you could say to insert the unborn child into that conversation. Excellent. And, and I love it. And I love exactly that. It's a bit of a lightning rod to get people thinking about this as a matter of equality, not as a necessarily a religious topic or just a philosophical topic, but as a human topic. And, and I know that for many people who have the March for Life on their bucket list, especially the March for Life in DC, um, they, they love to know about who they can expect to see and hear and what they can gain from the March for Life. And I was wondering if you could give us a little bit of an overview of what somebody could expect from the March for Life, especially for those who might be still on the fence as to whether or not they're going to make the, the trip um, to D.C. What could they expect from this year's March for Life? Well, Cam, I love the idea of the March for Life being on someone's bucket list. I've never heard <laughs> that idea before, and I just love thinking about it. It brought a smile to my face, and it should be on everyone's bucket list. Yeah. Um, similar to any you know, lived reality, there's something that's very different about reading about the March for Life or seeing pictures or watching it virtually to actually coming in person. 
And, you know, I personally, this is my experience where it just changes your heart. But um, more than me, I've heard so many, I guess you could say, conversion stories of people who come to the march and their life is radically changed because of the experience of being here in person. And, I, you know, I think for everyone it's different, but a common theme that I hear is just the unifying, uh, like, experience of hundreds of thousands of people being there and that you're one of that group, you know, fighting for the human rights abuse, fighting against the human rights abuse of today. So anyways, I just want to put in a pitch for coming in person. It's it's really life changing. And as to um, the question of who they would hear from this year. Wow. It's a really stellar lineup. I'm going to make sure I don't miss um, anyone. I have a list right here in front of me, but some of the headliners um, include Father Mike Schmitz. He is the host of the most popular podcast in the world right now, Bible in a Year. Um, maybe some of you have heard of the show Duck Dynasty. Lisa Robertson from Duck Dynasty is going to share her testimony. It's a little sad, but finding hope and healing after being involved in abortion. Um, I think one of the best speakers will be Katie Shaw. Uh, we know that when speaking of equality begins in the womb, that young, that unborn children diagnosed with, um, or not diagnosed, but who receive a positive test for Down syndrome are disproportionately targeted for abortion. And uh, Katie has Down syndrome. And so, you know, her presence and her speaking will very much showcase the idea of equality beginning in the womb. And I could go on and on and on and on and on, because I think I just hit like three or four there, but we have about 12, 13 speakers. Um, so check us out at marchforlife.org and, and see the rest of them. Blows the mind that that um, you don't see it as a bucket list. It, it's a bucket list item for ton of people in Canada. Peter, both you and I are in Canada here. We have more people who who want to go to the American March for Life than than often the Canadian Marchers for Life, <laughs> largely just for exactly the reason that you mentioned, Jeannie, the, the sheer volume of people, the volume of people that they're able to um, meet there, not only um, students and, and other people in all walks of life, but these speakers that you mentioned. Um, I know Kirk Cameron and other, I'm sure there's going to be a ton of politicians there as well. Um, Really, really exciting. Really cool to see that it's still going forward um, in this year that that is going to be tricky, I'm sure, compared to other years, but really excited to see this going forward. So excited for that. And I'm curious, just on a, um, from your own perspective, so you have been a part of the leadership team of the March for Life for almost 10 years now, I believe. And what is it that excites you about the March for Life? I'm sure that there's some people who might see this as just kind of a day-to-day -day kind of thing, but probably not very many because you get to interact with so many different people. What is it about the March for Life specifically that ex excites you and kind of inspires you to grow in your pro-life conviction and, and kind of engagement around the rest of the year? Oh, that's a really good question. Uh, I, for me, it's watching God opening different doors and, and then closing certain doors and, and watching him at work. Um, all of us on staff, we've got just a really fantastic staff, are people of deep uh, personal faith, even though the March for Life itself is an, a non-sectarian organization. But watching, you know, really knowing that we're on the right side of history here and then watching certain things fall into place or other things, you know, sort of stymied. Um, I think to me, that's one of the most exciting things. And then always, you know, like right around the, the day of it, before the day, seeing the young people come in. I mean, my heart just starts beating fast in the best kind of way or seeing like all the religious nuns, like the Sisters of Life kind of streaming through Washington, D.C. It's like D.C. is changed. I'm there most days of the week. But to see all these young people with these positive signs and their T-shirts and all of that, it's like, oh, I, I, there's something about it that's kind of hard to put into words, but it's just so uplifting. And then, of course, always getting up on stage that first moment and looking out at the crowd and especially seeing the young people, that's really breathtaking as well i can imagine i can imagine um okay so one of the things one of the final questions we have is a lot of times people look at new years or election cycles and different things and say this is the most important year this is the most important time for us to be active but i think when we look at the american climate when it comes to abortion we're seeing the supreme Court. there's a case before the supreme Court, dobbs v jackson whole health um texas has made waves with their recent legislation 
And, and there are, I mean, so many other things as well, where it seems like the abortion industry has their back up to a wall and they, um, in a sense, some of them are, are saying that the writing's on the wall, that Roe versus Wade is going to be overturned and all of this. Looking at the March for Life, looking at the, the, the thousands and thousands and thousands of people, especially young people who are coming to the March for Life, I wonder um, why might this year be particularly important, not just to come to the March for Life, but but also to get more involved in the pro-life movement in their local communities. I wonder if you could share with us a call to action um, just in, in light of some of the things we're seeing culturally. I'll share with you what's been on my heart, which is that I think we're at a cultural crossroads here. And I've watched this, you know, you can read or see things through human history. So I'm, I'm Catholic. Uh, and one of my greats, um, one of my favorite people in the world, someone who I pray to in heaven now, pray, pray for his intercession is St. John Paul the Great. And there were so many moments in human history that were crossroads that he would encourage people to pray and fast and just call upon God. And, and it changed things for the good. Like one that comes to mind, I'll just share is, um, and I can try to do this in a minute or two, but it's when it was shortly after he became Pope, he went to Poland. And uh, it was amazing in terms of Poland was under communist regime at the time, and the government did not want him to become a religious figure, a Christian figure. And he came and he had these outdoor activities. And in one outdoor activity, he was calling upon the Holy Spirit and invoking the Holy Spirit. And the people, literally millions of people were at this. It was an outdoor mass. They started applauding and singing Come Holy Spirit for like 15 minutes and they wouldn't stop applauding. It was just so moving. And then at another point, he asked them how they felt about communist you know, regime and, and religious freedom. And the people started chanting, we want God. We want God. I mean, they just started chanting this. And, you know, the people coming together in a group, which reminds me of the March for Life, like these, you know, hundreds of thousands of people coming together and praying and invoking God and fasting can make a difference. And in that time, that was the beginning of the fall of communism was when he went to Poland. And especially, I think these outdoor activities where these millions of people came together. And I think right now with Dobbs before us, I think we're at a cultural crossroad. And I think that we need to call upon God and to pray and fast in such a fervent way, because it can happen. I mean, it, it can happen. We can build a culture of life and we may very well see Roe overturned this year, which doesn't mean abortion's illegal in the United States. And I think that's really important to mention, but it would be a huge, significant step in the right direction. And so I see us as being at a cultural crossroads. And so come to the march. But even if you can't come to the march, I mean, maybe even more importantly, pray fast, um, tell your story through the hashtag why we march so that, you know, someone else's heart is changed through your story. But I absolutely believe we're, we're at a crossroads and that um, it kind of rests on us a little bit to call upon God and to allow him to use us as his instruments. Amen. And this is so cool to see from the perspective of Canada. I mean, it, it's easy in Canada to get um, kind of disheartened and, yeah. and disillusioned yeah. by abortion because of where everything's at. But it's so cool to see America and, and to be able to follow in the footsteps of what you guys have been able to achieve. I know that, I mean, we're recording this a week before the, the launch of the march, which is crazy time for you. So I know that your time is precious. Where do, where do we find more? Where do you want to direct people to learn more about the March for Life, whether it's accommodations, whether it's how to line up a bus, whether it's um, other details about schedules? Where do people go to find out more? Marchforlife.org. So that'll give you all of those details, including some live streaming options of the rally itself, a free um you know, event the day before Capitol Hill 101 with an all-star cast teaching people how to interact with their member with their elected officials. Uh, and then they could also sign up for the Rose Dinner even virtually. That's a paid event. That's $25 per person to watch online. But um, most of the things are free and just incredible. So highly encourage you to do that or even better come in person. Awesome. Jeannie, thank you so much for taking the time and we wish you nothing but success uh, as you see the execution of the March for Life and uh, really getting people activated and motivated to continue working in the pro-life movement. 
Well, thank you so much for having me. Thanks for what you guys are doing. I'll tell Anne Clary said hello. <laughs> Please do. Okay. All right. God bless you guys. Bye-bye. That is Jeannie Mancini, the president of the March for Life in the USA, March for Life USA, um, talking about the March for Life that's coming up, the March for Life that, that hopefully you are going to, going to be attending, going to be inspired from and, and motivated from to, as I mentioned off the top of the show, go back to your communities and continue pro-life outreach, continue fighting against a culture of death, a culture um, that seeks to, to tear apart, in a sense, the, our children and fight for a culture of life. Cam, any final thoughts? I know we had talked about the March for Life uh, on an episode previously. I think it was episode 27, um, how people can make the most out of their March for Life. But maybe to, to start it off, do you have any thoughts on uh, some of the things that Jeannie shared and then maybe touch a little bit on sort of a recap from episode 27 where we talked about that last year? Yeah. So again, super appreciative of Jeannie making the time to join us on, on the podcast. She's got a million things up in the air, but I really, really appreciated how she kind of identified this year as a cultural crossroad, not only in America, but arguably around the world, right? That, that America in many ways, uh, I mean, more than just on the abortion conversation, but uh, certainly on the abortion conversation is a bit of a, a lightning rod for the rest of the world, right? That everyone is watching what is going to happen with this Supreme Court decision. What is going to happen to Roe versus Wade? This is going to send ripple effects around the world. And now I would argue more than at any point for a long time, we need to make our voices heard, right? And, and it was interesting talking to Josh Brom a little bit ago and how this is kind of what we've been praying for, what we've been working towards for the last number of decades in Canada and America and around the world that a challenge to Roe versus Wade. And now is not the time to um, get get um, frightened and, and scurry back to our, our homes and holes wherever we are. This is what we have been hoping for for the longest time. We never should have thought that it would be easy when this comes to being decided upon. And so this year's Brunch for Life, like Jeannie said, is a great opportunity for your voice to be heard, to come shoulder to shoulder with hundreds of thousands of other people um, to demonstrate just how much support there is, not just for the pro-life worldview, but for people who may be in hard circumstances. The, the idea that pro-lifers are not here to support you is completely um, nonsensical. The people at the March for Life, you go up to them like, hey, are you going to help me um, through my pregnancy? I'm sure that 99 times on 100, they're going to be willing at that moment to say, yeah, I'll help you. What do you need? What do you need? I, I can help you out. And so um, bearing that in mind, a few things that we mentioned last year. So for a lot of people, the March for Life is a great springboard. But we want to make it that way for everybody. The March for Life in and of itself is not going to end abortion. It's not going to end abortion in America. It's not going to end abortion in Canada. It's probably not in and of itself going to change a ton of hearts and minds. And so how do you leverage your March for Life experience, whether you're there in person, whether you tune in virtually, how do you leverage that to the greatest impact of transforming culture? Well, what we talked about last year, Peter, like you mentioned in episode 27, is four components of optimizing your March for Life experience. First, use this as an opportunity to be invigorated and empowered by the community. Jeannie touched on this of how cool it is to have that huge volume of people who are like-minded. So often you can feel isolated in your home community as the weirdo who believes that abortion is wrong. Go there and be reminded that you do not stand alone. You are not alone in your conviction that it is, it is inappropriate to re resolve even the most challenging of pregnancies by killing the weakest, most vulnerable member of the human family. Be reminded that you're not alone in that. Number two, remember to network and get ideas from other folks. That there's going to be people from all across the country, all around the world there, people marching in their home communities, people even tuning in online and commenting in the, the comment section, whatever. Use that as an opportunity to learn from them. What are they doing? What is working in their hometown? What have they done that has been effective in transforming their own um, community? Changing minds, saving lives, um, meeting with people who are in tough situations, helping people who have chosen abortion already find hope and healing. Use this as a network networking opportunity to learn about how you can take your pro-life um, involvement, engagement to the next level. And that leads perfectly into the third item, which is getting educated. Use this as an opportunity. Uh, Jeannie mentioned the day before the Thursday, today, ultimately, um, they're doing um, 
Capital 101, I believe she called it, which is kind of the, the training module for how to effectively lobby politicians and, and work with your, your representatives and whatnot. This is going to be valuable information for anybody, regardless of whether you're from America or not. So get trained. Get trained on how to make a political impact. Get trained on how to have good conversations. Keep not only listening to this show, but there's going to be speakers there that can help you have good conversations about abortion and learning about all sorts of other ministries. Fourth and finally, Peter, let your voice be heard. As much as this isn't going to necessarily um, tip a politician over the edge when it comes to voting for or against a pro-life amendment or, or bill, it may very well help them remember the fact that their constituents, the people who got them into office, the people who live in the area that they're representing, want pro-life legislation. People want protection for pre-born children. So let your voice be heard. Use this as a springboard and not just as a one-off. Allow this to inspire and empower you to pro-life action throughout the rest of the year, whether that's formally with your pro-life group, whether that's 40 Days for Life or or if that's less formal, whether that's having conversations with the kids in your class, the, the students at your university, whether that's talking to people in your place of work or even your family members, use this as an opportunity to get inspired, to network and get ideas, to get educated, and to let your voice be heard uh, tomorrow, January 21st in D.C., wherever you are, and long, long after that, Peter. That, that's what I got to say. What do you think? That is that is fantastic, sir. I have nothing more to add um, of value. Uh, you did a remarkable job there. But yeah, just to, to clarify, be there at the March for Life and continue your work in the pro-life movement, defending and protecting pre-born children. My name is Peter. I am the host of the show. That is Cam, our wonderful co-host. If you want to reach out to us for any reason, any thoughts, suggestions, questions, or whatever it might be, you can reach out to us on our website, prolifeguys.com. If you want to get involved in our ministry here at the podcast, you can do so at patreon.com slash guys. There are some perks um, for that as well, including a, a roundtable discussion that's coming up very, very shortly for our Patreon supporters. Uh, so go check us out there, patreon.com slash guys, And you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Thank you so much for sharing this episode and our other ones with your friends and your family and your coworkers and everyone else. And thank you for tuning in. We are grateful for the continuous support that we keep receiving. And we want to encourage you, as uh, as we just did and as Jeannie did and as we've done in the past, continue to fight, continue to, def to defend preborn children, continue to do what you can to save lives, change minds, and transform our culture.